Hey everybody, um, my name is Doyle Lucas. I'm honored to serve as a uh, professor of management in the Fall School of Business at Anderson University. Been privileged to do that for a long time. I'm actually a, an AU alum. I did my undergraduate degree um, several years ago uh, and, and was a business major there too. But um, for a long time, even since those undergraduate days, I I've always had a real intrigue and interest into into why we work and the importance of work in our lives beyond just the paycheck. Um, clearly, I, I I don't do things for free. I work to be paid too. But but I've always sought work um, that was more than that. And I'm I think I'm fortunate in that I've had an opportunity as a, a rather long career as a professor to to realize lots of benefits out of that work that I do. I've got a couple uh, questions I want to ask you today and, and get you to think about uh, in light of the area that, that I have tended to specialize in. I've, I've spent most of my working career uh, teaching classes at the undergrad, at the graduate, even at the doctoral level uh, related to the people side of business, the, the, uh, the human resources that we have. And I, I have kind of a couple questions and some things I'd like you to consider today. Um, I want you to, in your mind, kind of develop two lists. So on one side, maybe maybe develop this. What do you think are, are some of the positive contributions that people make in your organization that winds up impacting uh, or leads you towards success in that firm? What are the things that, uh, what are the things that people do that you think contributes to success there? And then the second list is kind of the opposite. What are the things that people do that, uh, generate costs. What are the costs associated with employees that may even, uh, in a worst case scenario, detract from success of the firm? Here's the broad question. Uh, how does your firm, how does your organization view the people that work there, the human resources that work there? Do they see them, do they see you as an investment or as a cost? What about you personally? When you think about uh, people in the workplace, if you ever have dreams of starting your own business, will you view or do you think you'll view um, the people that work with you and for you? Are they an investment or are they a cost? I think our perspective and answers to that question really winds up influencing some strategic decisions that we make. And based on my uh, background and my interest, I just want to raise a couple issues with you here in a few minutes that we're together. Um, clearly, in organizations, we invest our money into resources that we need, buildings, technology, um, resources, equipment, raw materials, whatever it is that we need to provide and produce our product or produce the services that are there. Um, there is a sense, though, here's one perspective I want you to think about. Every firm does that. And whether or not that's strategic, I think, is the essence of the question. Some people say that investing only in physical resources is rather short-sighted. Um, think about this. Any, any building we build, any equipment we have, even any product we produce can probably be duplicated by someone else, or it can very likely can be duplicated by someone. It can be reverse engineered. It, they can buy our product and tear it apart. And even without violating any copyright or patent laws that we have, products can be duplicated. Office suites can be duplicated. Physical buildings can be designed very carefully like our competitors. So they, they quickly cease to be a competitive advantage. Now, I think we're striving for, and we think when we think of strategy, we think, what can I put in place that may be a sustainable competitive advantage for a long time, a very real competitive advantage. Um, I think there's a, the, the, the notion that if we think about people as an investment and the people in our firm, that could be a key to our unique competitive advantage. Their knowledge, their skills, their human skills, the knowledge base that they work from, uh, their strength in service, if we're a service business or it's just in providing service, Within, within our firm um, that competitors can't reproduce and they may not even be able to produce it in the same way. People could become our unique competitive advantage. I don't know if you've ever thought about viewing your employees or viewing your coworkers that way. Um, so a couple questions. 
if I was to think then about what, what would happen if I began to view decisions around people much more strategically than maybe we have? I think one of the, uh, at least in, in my uh, opinion and my experience, we put a lot of energy into being very strategic when we buy equipment or when we um, make decisions about a software platform that we're going to use for our information flow. We, we don't want to make the wrong decision. And that's, that's viable. That should be done. I'm not so sure we approach recruiting and hiring decisions the same way. I'm not as convinced sometimes that we don't view that as something to check off a list and, oh, I got somebody hired for that position. Uh, let's just move ahead. Here's the context I want you to think about this question. And if you were to hire your replacement, take what you know about your your job, your organization, and your what you do on a day-to-day -day basis. If you were to hire your replacement, what would you look for? What characteristics would matter? How could you predict the success of someone coming into your position? And how would that shape then the questions you asked or who you would look for and who you would actually wind up making a, an offer to? So I'd like to just uh, spend a couple minutes with you and thinking about the whole idea of strategic um, recruitment, strategic hiring process, strategic selection process, based on this framework that what if people, what if we viewed them as an investment, and what if we thought about them as a unique competitive advantage? So within our organizations, when we think about strategy, is strategic recruitment or strategic selection part of our conscious strategic management choice? to discover the best sources for new employees. Do you know where, do we know where we should best look? Do we have, have we paid attention to uh, what methods have worked best in, in, in the past? Uh, we wanna recruit employees who have the best chance of, of uh, good performance, great performance, uh, who have the lowest turnover, who are, have cooperative attitudes, or who, if we really wanna look at it pragmatically, they're gonna show up at work. They're gonna have low absenteeism rates. Um, let me present this thought to you. You know, while we can say, well, well, we'll hire and then we'll train them towards that. We can train and develop people uh, towards being successful employees. And certainly uh, training and development are critical. And I'm not, I would not suggest that we don't take our time with that. But it's very difficult to overcome kind of what build in headwind that we would fight against if we bring in poorly qualified or or mismatched employees, people who don't fit what we're about. So I just want to uh, throw out just some, some things to think about and just some pragmatic terms to think about. If I'm going to do this strategically, what do I need to focus in? And these aren't new terms, but consciously thinking about them, I think matters a great deal here. If I begin to develop this view that my employees are my unique competitive advantage. So I really need to think about a skills match. I really need to find somebody who either has as many of the skills as possible that match the job or the organization that I'm a part of. That assumes that I've done my homework, that I've actually looked at the position and consciously thought carefully about what skills do we really need. So a skills match is there. I need a knowledge match, um, either knowledge that they already bring with them, so carefully looking at their background, their experience, carefully looking at what they've uh, maybe studied in any kind of formal apprenticeship or internships or, or college programs they've been in, do they seem to have a knowledge match that lines up as much as possible with uh, the position that we're in? Sure, we'll, all, we'll still have to do training. We'll still have to do orientation. But strategically, if I can get one who has somebody who has a, a, a pretty significant knowledge match, what about ability? Do I get a sense of their ability uh, to, to learn, their ability to develop, even their, their willingness to do that. Those kind of three uh, terms, uh, skills, knowledge, ability, a lot of that's experience-based, but, but looking carefully at what have they done and have they presented, or making sure we're asking questions in, in our interview process uh, to, to see if they can respond and develop and, and um, base on those three areas to make a strategic choice now. Then secondly, um, Personality match, interest match, preference match. This is more about who the person is. Do I know a buff about our organization or the organization we want to be that I may begin to assess, does this person's personality match up with what we need in this position right now? Um, do their interests 
match? Do they seem to have an, in, are they interested in this industry? Do they seem to have an interest in development as best we can tell? And then their preferences, do their preferences tend to line up with um, the duties and the culture of the organization that we're presenting? Okay. So with those things in mind, just some food for thought today. What would happen in our organizations if indeed we began to view the people there as an investment, an investment worth making, one that cannot be duplicated easily by our competition, rather than just viewing them as a cost. It's been good to be with you today. Hope this has been helpful. Take care. Bye-bye.